tonight he showed the world what he could do. My God, a question. An extra gear for the freshman. Touchdown. And the freshman is off. Foot race. <laughs> They're looking at shoe bottoms and nothing else. Into the end zone. Touchdown. The freshman just ran it back to Philadelphia. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Future Freshman Podcast. Welcome to episode 13. Um, and today, uh, we got a lot of cool stuff going on. Of course, first, I want to introduce my very special guest. He is a C2C diehard. He is what I consider the unofficial interview coordinator for Campus to Canton. This is Mr. Luke Probosco. Luke, welcome to the Future Freshman Podcast. How are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for having me on. Uh, I, I guess I like that official uh, official title, unofficial title. Uh I also like it's better than like a C2C groupie. Um, so so it's, I like that more. So I'll, I'll go with yours. Yeah, I definitely think you've earned more uh, for the unofficial. And the goal is to make you official eventually. That way you're just the, the interview coordinator, or the event coordinator. Maybe we'll do that. So maybe the podcast will uh, will plant that seed in Austin's ear. Maybe he can, you know, mull over as he eats his Velveeta mac and cheese, which is extremely, extremely nasty. So um, <laughs> but we want to. Thank you for having on, man. Uh, today we have actually a very special guest as well. We had uh, a chance to interview Mr. Joe Hyman II. Of course, he is the freshman uh, running back coming into Northwestern University that he committed to as well. So we're actually going to get ready to dive into that interview. Before we start, uh, let's do some housekeeping. Are you ready, Mr. Luke? I am. Let's do it. All right, guys. So, of course, if you want to check out campusdecanton.com. Of course, we have the articles, tools, guides, different memberships, and so, so much more. Uh, I think it's a, a great layout. I love the new style of it. Um, Luke, can you give me just a quick minute of what you love about being in the NIL tier and what's your favorite thing about being a member here at Campus De Canton? Uh I mean, mainly it's the camaraderie. Like, we all, we all share a passion and a love for fantasy football. And, and some of us are into the recruiting. Some of us are into just the college. Like we're all, we all have something that we really like. And in this space, there's a lot of negativity out in the world and on Twitter and on Facebook, but every, I tweeted out about it, you know, a couple of weeks ago, like the Devi college football C2C space, like it's all propping people up a lot of love out there. And like, that's the main thing I just, I love and and when you're in the discord and in that nil tier like it's a lot of the same and it's not like hey what do you think about this player it might be like you know for example what do you think about you know dju and Mm -hmm. some people will be like you know oh everybody knows about dju but nobody nobody talks down to anybody they're like you know hey this is you know my thought this is here and there there's a lot of good information there in the in the chat of sleepers breakouts you know people who you know were on this person or or recruiting uh, different things there so there's a lot of a good conversations that happen in the, in that in that tier and um, I know you'll touch on it more but you get the devi guide you got the supplemental guide you get the college football guide all for free because you're part of that NIL tier and, yep. and that just kind of pays for it for, for itself Absolutely. Uh, I think that's a great shining example of why people should check it out. Not to mention, of course, the tools. My favorite is one of the ADP tools. Of course, the uh, the, the predictor tool is one of my favorites. Um, stats that you can kind of see and compare as well. And like you said, you can get access to the Discord where you have um, and NIL members actually get a personal chat. So you guys get a direct line to a lot of us throughout the day so we're able to answer. So that's a great plug, Luke. And um, I'm glad you're aboard in that. We can talk on a daily basis amongst with the other fellows. It does feel like family at C2C, and it's good to have that connection with the people that subscribe to us and check our stuff out, so we do appreciate it as well. Uh, of course, like he touched on, the Debbie Guide is out currently now. It is $20, or if you're a yearly NIL subscriber, it's uh, available on the day that it actually launched, so it should have hit your email as well. Hope you guys are enjoying some of the uh, features and the pages that are available. Over 250 of the top Debbie players on there as well. Um, tons of information background just helps you to decide on there as well i know luke's been digging into it as reading materials here throughout the summer and we'll give him some more uh here shortly as well but he's been digging it through uh just out of the blue what's one of your favorite profiles that you've probably read so far that just kind of made a light bulb pop off real quick Luke, before we move into the next housekeeping 
Um, well, mainly it's kind of getting me ready for my, my Devi, not necessarily my C2C league, but like my Devi league that I'm in. Cause I'm like, Hey, here are the guys that I'm owning in C2C. Like, what are their, cha-? like, that's what I went to first. Like, Hey, where are my guys at on my C2C team? And then I've already had my, my draft for the, my dynasty league. That's awesome. So please check it out if you can, like I said, $20 or if you're an NL member, uh, please check that out. Um, and then of course, we have the CFF guy that's coming up next. Of course, that is ongoing production. Uh, we're doing teams now. We have player profiles that we're starting to work on. So it's definitely something that we want you to check out. The graphics on this stuff is going to be absolutely fantastic. It's definitely a, a chef's kiss when it comes to the overall layout and stuff like that. I think this guide might actually uh, put the other ones to the test. Nothing against the Debbie guys, but I think we'll give them a good run for their money. So I think this will be a good one as well. Uh, Luke, what, what's something that you're super excited about with the CFF guy coming out here later in July? Well, I'm new to C2C in, in general, and I learned a lot last year, but I don't know everything about the teams. So that, like, that's what I'm looking forward to is like all the teams I don't know or the new teams that are, you know, we got your James Madison's that are now eligible that weren't last year. And I don't know a lot about James Madison. So, you know, things like that, little nuggets and, you know, who's maybe the one to watch, maybe not necessarily for this year, but next year. Absolutely. Who can I make as my waiver pickups during the year, like towards the end of the year that I can kind of stash so I don't have to worry about drafting them. Exactly. And that's the goal is to find you value, find you guys that's a must haves and then find you people that you put on the watch list and be prepared to grab on waivers if you can as well. So definitely be looking out for that in July. Um, it's going to be fantastic. And then of course, if you want to visit www.patreon.com slash CFE winning edge, of course, Nick and his crew there, is working diligently. Uh, they're working on stats projections now, so not just team pages and power rankings as far as their strength of schedule and things like that, but now he's looking at overall outcomes as well, so be looking at that as well. Right now, he does have a deal going on in June. I believe if you sign up for one of his yearly uh, tiers, you move up to the second tier, so definitely worth checking out. It's only $5 usually to start if you're doing month to month, but if you do the yearly, I believe you save you some money there, so go check that out. So then you can have, have access to this. Um, those staff projections are really good for those that are doing props, uh, whether it's prize picks or you're doing uh, betting online with Bets US or whatever your favorite platform is. So please go check him out. Of course, tell him the Future Freshman Podcast sent you and that we think uh, the, C, the C2C guys thinks he's doing a great job. So please go check out his work. He does a fantastic job with all those spreadsheets and uh, color coordination, which I enjoy as well as far as being a OCD guy myself. So. And then, of course, we are, uh, you know, associated with Prize Picks. Or at least the CFFU brand is associated with Prize Picks. So if you go check out the promo code CFFU, we'll match your first deposit up to hundred dollars. So we got a hundred bucks. If you want to throw another? You got two hundred dollars to work with. Uh, we're getting near the summer time, so soon it'll just be baseball, baseball, and some more baseball. But at the same time, uh, hey, you know, we're getting closer to August, and it'll be time to uh, get their bankroll up. So definitely check that out. So please go check out Prize Picks. Download the app and then put in the promo code CFFU uh, when you're doing your matching deposit as well. All right, Luke, that's enough for the housekeeping. Uh, what do you say we get into that interview with Joe Hyman? You ready, man? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's do it. All right, guys, welcome to the interview portion of the Future Freshman Podcast for this week, episode 13. Me and my special guest here, Luke P- Povasco, we are joined by Mr. Joe Hyman. He is a freshman commit to Northwestern University. Uh, Joe, welcome to the Future Freshman Podcast. Glad to have you on, man. Sir, thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Uh, first, we want to congratulate you, man, getting the Arkansas Gatorade Player of the Year Award. That is fantastic. Tell us what that means to you, to your family, to your uh, to your high school. How, how's that feel, man? That's a pretty awesome accomplishment. Uh, I mean, it really meant a lot to me and my family and everyone uh, who supported me throughout my years. I mean, Ever since I was a kid growing up, one of my main goals was to win Gatorade Player of the Year one of my uh, high school years. And just winning that was very special to me, and it was a blessing. And I really I really take pride in putting on for the state of Arkansas because people sometimes look down on us as not as good of athletes as other people. But I try to do my best to change that narrative. As you should. And I think it's ridiculous because Arkansas puts out some amazing people. So <laughs> I don't mm-hmm. see that comparison as well. But it's cool to have your chip on your shoulder. That actually just means that, you know, the play time is going to be even better as well. Um, so you coming from uh, Pulaski, uh, that's known, you know, the overtime series there on YouTube mm-hmm. is how I kind of found out about Coach Kelly and stuff like that. 
what's it like no punting onside kicks? What's it like to have a team that's just unconventional? Defenses don't know what to do. What What's your thoughts as far as like uh, just seeing their faces when they come across you guys and they're like, we don't know how to defend against this and they're supposed to change this freak out. Well, how do you feel about the unconventional play there at Pulaski and your time there with Coach Kelly? Uh, I mean, I love playing in that system. I mean, it was different, very different from everybody else. And I like to be different. I like to do different things and just going against people and them not knowing what to do against us. It just it's it's funny kind of because, I mean, we just go out there and we just try to dominate. So, yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. When you, um, when you talk about like things being different, like you got tape of you being in a wildcat, you got tape of you being out on the boundary, in the slot, in motion, like you're everywhere. <laughs> and I, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, that's what it, that's what I'm trying to take the Northwest. And I mean, just from like high school to college, I really just want to do some of the same things that uh, I was doing. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that leads into the next question. Uh, you're absolutely uh, fantastic in the receiving game from the tape that we've been able to see and stuff like that. Is something that's come naturally to you? Have you played like other sports, baseball, things like that? Or is that just something that you just naturally is a, a, a ball catcher as you progress through high school and, you know, your time at, you know, Pop Warner and stuff as you're coming up? I mean, just coming up. I mean, I play different sports here and there, but I mean, ever since I was playing Little League, they utilized me different, like as running back, receiver, really pretty much anything that uh, they needed me to do. And I really, I mean, I like catching the ball. I like lining up a receiver and doing that. And I really take pride in that. So I work on uh, running my routes, catching the ball and doing those little things to uh, just keep my game up. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, do you know, uh, has anyone clocked you and told you how many, how fast you run, like as miles per hour or anything like that, or from any of your specific times, like, if you've done any track stuff, has anyone told you how fast you actually run when you're in the open space? To be honest, I'm not sure on miles per hour, okay. but I'm sure I'm sure it's pretty fast. I mean, if people what if we like, could, what if we could tell you yes. how fast you ran? What if we clocked you? Would you be interested in knowing this? Oh yeah, I would. <laughs> Go for it, Luke. You can tell. Twenty point eight miles an hour, mm, which is smoking. <laughs> <laughs> that's getting down, man. Uh, so what do you what do you feel like is your main strength as a as a running back? What's like the one thing that you pride yourself in, uh, you know, coming up and, and joining Northwestern? What's your one main target that when you are in an interview room or talking to the coaches, what's your one thing that you're like, hey, this is this is my bread and butter? What's what's that for you? Um, I would say getting the ball in an open space because that can really showcase my speed and acceleration. And I really feel like that's uh one of the main keys to my game is my speed and acceleration and that's what separates me from others yeah the tape that you put yeah. out there like you get to that secondary and if anybody's even with you like you're gone yeah. and it's like people like i don't know people look like they have really good angles on you and it doesn't matter it's yeah. like he gone he gone <laughs> he gone <laughs> absolutely man uh so what's something that you want to bring into the freshman year that you want to improve on so if you're you're speeding your accelerations that one what's one thing that you want to target uh coming in your freshman year as you start to climb the depth chart there at, at northwestern um to be honest I, I really just want to improve on everything i just want to i want to get faster stronger more explosive i just want to add to all parts of my game and i feel like if i just do that then i have a better chance of touching the field yeah, absolutely. Are you excited about the the weight room and the new program and stuff like that getting on campus? I know you're oh, yeah, pretty definitely. close to doing that. Yeah, I'm I'm very excited about that. I mean, just having an actual strength coach and coaches right. that are in that field that can help me transition my body, and I'm just really really excited about it. Yeah, man, that's that's the great part about those universities, man. They'll take care of you guys for sure. Um, is there a, a certain football player that you looked up to when you were younger or a running back that you kind of tailored your stuff to, or did you kind of collect from different, you know, players and stuff like that? What's, what's uh, some, some players that you've looked up to in the past and in the present, maybe. Um, I would say one of the main guys I really looked up to was Reggie Bush. I mean, just watching cool. his tape, he was probably one of the most explosive running backs that have ever uh, played college football. And I really try to move my game after him. And also another player is Alvin Kamara. He yes. really, I really try to move my game after him because you, you see he can run through the holes. He can catch the ball out the backfield, run routes, and do those different type of things. Yep. He has some he has some fresh legs, that Alvin Kamara guy. He, he can get it done for sure. 
Uh, so, go so, when you're, question, so when you're getting ready for a game on Fridays, do you have a certain song that you got to listen to, an artist, a playlist? Do you have a routine? Um, I can tell you, I don't listen to a certain song, but I listen to NBA Youngboy. He's one of my okay. favorite yeah. artists to listen to before games. He really gets me uh, pumped up. And usually okay. before yeah. that, like, my routine, uh, I mean, I just try to keep it simple. I usually, I sometimes read a book before just to get my mind off of it, try to stretch out a little bit, but nothing too crazy. That's pretty cool, man. Uh, so what stood out about Northwestern over the other choices? Because you had a pretty decent list of, uh, you know, commits, uh, you know, options and stuff like that for your offers. What was it about Northwestern and uh, and the coach, you know, as far as picking them as the choice for your for your uh, for your freshman year, man? Um, I would say just getting the best of both worlds. I mean, I'm going to get a great a great education, and you're playing in the Big Ten, so I mean, you couldn't ask for anything better. And going to Northwestern, you're getting the top ten education, and that's really something that I take pride in is getting my schoolwork done. And I mean, just when I went up there on my official visit, all the coaches, they were just loving and the players, they were loving. So it really just felt like a family atmosphere, a home away from home. Yeah. Um, Luke, so, um, yeah, ask that. Let's go for it. So other than uh, just being excited for week one to be here, you Northwestern has a little bit of a, a twist to their week one. They get to go to Dublin, Ireland. Yeah. Are you excited about that? Like, what have they talked at all about that schedule? Do you go a week ahead to kind of get used to the time zone? Like, have they talked about any of that? Um, they haven't talked about any of that, but I'm very excited to go to Dublin. I mean, I've been out awesome. the country going to like the islands, like Jamaica, the Bahamas, and stuff like that, but I've never been to like Ireland or like any of those countries. So that was, that's going to be a cool experience for me and my family. Yes. That's on the bucket list for me too. So I'm I'm super stoked for you, man. Mm. Absolutely. Um, so you know, you talked about education. Northwestern's known for great degrees like engineering, things like that in particular. Is there a certain thing that you want to be majoring in as you go into there? Or is there something that you're focused on as far as education wise? Uh, to be honest, I'm I'm kind of debating whether I should go into sports medicine or civil engineering. I mean, just one or the other. I just uh just going into those fields, I feel like I can use my abilities to help people. And that's something that I really enjoy. I really enjoy giving back and helping others. So I feel like going into those fields would be good. It's amazing. That's like, yeah, that's awesome. You're a smart dude. Like going into that stuff, like that is yeah, that's that's no awesome. Joke. awesome man. So what kind of hobbies do you have outside of football? Um, I mean, usually I just like to hang out with my friends. I really like going into nature, like, climbing a mountain or just going to a trail and just finding peace there and uh i mean just working out i mean that's really it yeah what, sure. what's your what's your favorite like lift or or um or day to do i say lower body a lot of people don't like lower to do body? Lower body. Yeah. i don't i'm an upper body guy <laughs> <laughs> i love doing lower body yeah it takes a special type of person to be excited about lower body yes <laughs> leg day man uh do you, do you have like Go for it, Luke. No, go ahead, Brian. I was going to say, uh, you know, is there a certain split that you do, or is it not going to matter now with the new the strength coach? I guess you're going to have your own planned out for you, but did you have a specific, like, uh, day that you liked the best as far as, like, other than legs? Did you, like, split it with something like shoulders, or did you just all legs all during the during the workout? Um, I mean, I used to go to a trainer, and he – I mean, it wouldn't be all lower body, but, I mean – on Mondays and Wednesdays, it will be upper body. And then on Tuesday and Thursday, it will be lower body. But we would, like, do, like, other things, like curls and stuff like that just to keep uh, our body up. Yeah, I got you. Do you uh, have there... any, other, any other hobbies or any, anything else unique uh, about you or something that you want to share yeah. share to the world? Yeah, you got any special talents you're hiding from this, Joe? <laughs> uh, special talents? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I really like music. That's something that I really enjoy listening to. I yeah. really listen to music, a lot of music. And I mean, I used to play the trumpet when I was younger, but I gave it up. Awesome. So I'm really thinking about going back into the music field, probably playing a piano or something, or just learning something new. So that would be really Heck, cool. Maybe man. you can get an NIL deal in, in the music. Yeah, yeah. Dude. <laughs> that'd be pretty cool, man. Well, we want to thank you for hopping on the Future Freshman podcast and joining the show. 
Uh, is there uh, anywhere that people can come find you, whether it's uh, social media or anything like that, and anything you want to tout out uh, for anybody? Uh, well, my Twitter is Joseph Hyman, just my name. And then my Instagram is J6E Hyman. So. Yes, go check him out. We're definitely excited to see you this season, man. We're definitely rooting for you for sure. Um, we hope you climb that depth chart quickly, my man, and, uh, and put some uh, put some points on the board for sure. Um, we're very excited to see uh, what, what you guys do in Dublin for sure as well. Uh, so we appreciate you having on, man. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Thanks Joe. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the interview. I thought it was pretty awesome of Joe to be able to come on and talk to us for, you know, 20 minutes or less or so. Um, I thought it was uh, really, really cool what we found out about him, what he had to share. Um, what's uh, something in the interview that stuck out to you, Luke, when we did the interview there with Joe? What's something that you take away that you thought was really, really cool about Joe? Well, one, just like, you know, special talents, you know, he played the trumpet is like, you know, you don't know these players, you know, you don't know them when they're off the field, if they don't have their number on and they're, you know, it's hard to know these guys. You, they got a helmet on. So that's what I really like. Another thing that, you know, in general in football talk, it's like, Hey, does that guy got that dog in him? Like, mm -hmm. like he, he mentions, you know, about being from Arkansas and like, he wants to represent Arkansas and he's going to go out there and do whatever he can to, you know, prove himself, prove the state, you know, get that recognition that he feels that Arkansas deserves. And, you know, I don't think that kid's going to get outworked by anybody. So. Absolutely. And I feel like Arkansas, I mean, you know, they don't get as much love, but they should because there's a lot of ballers that come out of it. Uh, just something to add on there as well. We didn't tell him the stats because he probably knows the stats, but the kid went for 4,882 yards rushing, 68 touchdowns, and then he added that with 2,685 yards receiving with 25 receiving touchdowns. So he has, I think, well over 7,000 yards, which is the second best in Arkansas State history in high school football. So I think his Gatorade uh, – his uh, player of the year was well, well, you know, rewarded. I think he definitely deserved the accomplishment for sure. Another thing I really enjoyed is that uh, he was really, really hyped to hear about how fast they run when we clocked them at 20.8 miles per hour. It's just cool to see uh, the two worlds collide as far as uh, us at C2C and being able to kind of do the analytics and stuff like that to try to help whether it's in fantasy football purposes, but to be able to bring that type of information to Joe and see Joe's mind kind of be like, oh, wow, 20.8 is extremely fast. I thought that was really cool as well. So I thought, uh, you know, we gave him some substance while he gave us some really cool answers. So uh, we're definitely rooting for Joe, and I definitely think we'll all be kind of fans of his, you know, and carry on and follow his career as it goes as well. So we are wishing him the best. And just once again on, on the podcast, we want to thank Joe for coming on and having us on, man. Uh, any last shout, shout out to a big wide receiver guy for getting us the miles per hour. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, the, those, those information, that kind of information is, is pretty cool to athletes. I think so. Uh, I think that's pretty awesome. So any last thoughts on the interview before we move into big fish, small pond, good sir. Nope. Let's dive on in. All right, man. Well, let's get to it. I had to do the big Marlin. They had the big Marlin tournament going on down here on the coast of North Carolina. So it's time for big fish, small pond. Uh, I believe Michael Jordan and his crew at catch 23 are tied for third. So not the biggest fish, but they're trying to win. Uh, Jordan's done it for, I think for the past three years. Um, so he's trying to win it and bring home a, a fishing tournament championship as long as with as many NBA titles as well. So, uh, but we're going to talk about a guy that has now committed to Troy university. And that is Mr. Tay Meadows. Of course, he is a three-star a prospect for 24-7 sports. He was graded 0 0.8519. He's a 5'10", 180-pound back. Uh, he was the 85th overall running back in the 22, 22 class. Um, something I found as far as his accolades along there is in the year 2020, of course, it's the COVID year. As junior, he did help his high school to the state championship. He ran 38 times that game for 264 yards and four touchdowns, which was a beast. And he earned offensive MVP uh, of, the, of the game. Uh, against a highly rated Gordo team. So 4A, I believe that's pretty decent competition. Um, something that I really liked is that he did get some offers, a lot of G5, but he did get offers from uh, teams like Memphis. Uh, he also did from Tennessee, who are more of the P5 schools. But he also got some offers from a lot of these uh, higher end, like the G5 ones. So your Appalachian States, ECU, which is right down the street. Of course, Charlotte, the same state. So a lot of the neighboring states of Alabama definitely offered 
uh, Tay Meadows in there. Before we go into the depth chart, uh, Luke, what you uh, what did you see on tape? What did you like about Tay Meadows and his style of play as a running back uh, coming into uh, Troy University this year, man? Well, first off, dude looked bigger than like his linemen. Right. So then I was like, okay, is that you know, is he bigger than his linemen? Like he like he looks big out there. Um, but then, you know, being at 5'10", 180, it's like, okay, like maybe his line's a little bit smaller, so maybe he doesn't have the best, best uh, you know, blocking going on. So I reached out to one of my buddies that I do a podcast with, Jacob Belleville. He was a lineman in, in high school, and I was like, I can't tell if he's got really good vision and patient or, like, if he's just not hitting that hole enough. And he was, he was like, well, they ran a lot of trap blocks and wing T, which takes a lot of time for those blocks to set up. So he's got the good vision and he's got the good patience, but his his line isn't that big, so they couldn't do zone reads. So they played to their line strength and they're small and athletic, which then kind of puts that size in, into into um, uh, vision there. But the dude has really good bursts. So like he does a really good job of setting up those blocks and, and being patient. And then he sees that hole and he goes north. Um, pretty quick. He's not dancing around. Like you'll see a lot of fast guys that just, Hey, can I get the edge and then go, or, Hey, I get out, you know, I hit that hole and then I go out to the sideline. Like he just keeps going North and it it doesn't really matter. He doesn't try to get out to that sideline and and get up, which I really, really liked. Um, And when he does get hit, like it takes a lot to get him to go down. He doesn't go down on first contact and he just, keeps those feet going, which is great to get those extra yards. Um, I think he would be, like, really good. I don't know much about Troy and their in their offense. they got a new head coach coming in. Right. But um, I think he does a really good job of one cut and go. Like, I'm not yeah. saying, like, he is a Nick Chubb, but, like, that similar style to, like, what Nick Chubb does really well. Yeah, he's like, I think that's – For sure, yeah. Um, and then – just kind of the average weight gain um, for a Sun Belt running back is twenty point three pounds, um, and the average is for any non like doesn't matter of your conference is twelve point four pounds from your recruitment to your combine, um, and that's a sample size of three hundred and four people. So this was all done by Chris Moxley here at, at Camps to Canton. And also stars matter. So three stars add 14.4 pounds. So getting all that information, doing some loosey goosey math, let's assume he adds 14.4 pounds and he goes to the combine at 5'10, 5'9, 197 pounds. Like he's going to be in that 28 around BMI um, because currently he's at 25.8. Right. And I didn't do any rankings for 2022. I'm just getting into it. So, so far, my 2023 running backs, um, the average is 26.5 going into their senior year. And he's already going into to college at, at 25.8. So that's a little um, suboptimal in, in comparison. So um, I think when he gets out at 28.3, like, that would be a pretty good BMI to, to end at. Um, but he's got a couple bigger backs already there. Right. Yeah. They're about five. I think he's got two sophomores at least ahead of him. that are five ten, two twenty, And then there's a, a red shirt senior that's there. That's also a pretty big guy. So I think he's going to do, you know, he's going to need that year in the weight room, mm-hmm. to get that up. But, you know, getting on to college, getting that uh, nutrition, getting into that gym, I think, I think, he'll do pretty well in that, in that sense. But uh, like I said, they got a new coach coming in. His name uh, is John Summerall. He was the inside linebacker coach and co-defensive coordinator for Kentucky this last year. Yep. So that's, I look at that. I'm like, okay, defensive head coach. I don't really like that for my offense. So who's their offensive coordinator? And they just hired their new offensive coordinator, Joe uh, Cradrock. Craddock, Craddock, yeah, Craddock, I think. And yep. he was was last a tight ends coach for UAB, but he was the offensive coordinator at SMU when SMU had Sutton 
and he played quarterback himself at Middle Tennessee. Um, in his offenses, he has produced two 1,000-plus yard rushers, but I look at the track record of being a quarterback, being a quarterback's coach in several of his positions. He's probably going to run. He's probably going to throw the ball uh, a decent amount, and, and that was something that on tape there wasn't a lot of you know, throws to him, but they weren't like, I'm in the slot. It was swing passes, screen right. passes. It was a lot of the negative yardage, you know, pass plays. I'm not making plays for him. And so that's something I think he can, he can improve on, but I definitely think he's somebody that I'm going to be on my watch list and just kind of see how that backfield shakes out, see how the new offensive coordinator goes. Cause I'm, I'm more so coming from a Debbie standpoint when I come mm-hmm. to C2C and like, I'm just going to buy talent. I don't uh-huh. really care about what coaches are. Coaches change. Same thing goes for college, but like college coaches are just really stubborn. And it's like, my system makes everything. So yeah. you really on the college side, you really have to pay attention to system, system, systems. I mean, granted your, your good guys are going to be good, but like, you know, when you're, when you're down, um, you know, Sunbelt fishing, like I, I want to know what that system looks like. So it's going to be a wait and wait and see approach for me. And, and definitely one of those guys I, I star in fan tracks and kind of watch and, and see how, if he doesn't get the lead position, like, Hey, what do those guys in front of him do? If they don't, you know, two things, if they do something, it's like, okay, well that offense must be, you know, not too bad. It must be suitable. So I want to keep my eye on them or they don't do anything. Well, maybe I need to get on them and get them on my team because other guys are getting opportunities and not making of it. So I want to get on, on Meadows. Um, so there's different kind of ways to look at it, but I'm, I'm definitely keeping my eye on them and, and looking at more of a mid season end of year pickup. Um, if I, if I do decide to pull the trigger. Yeah, sure. Um, from a CFF perspective, uh, Troy has been known over the time, and yes, there's no offensive coordinator. But I will say, looking at the depth chart when I was looking up the running back depth chart, that Troy doesn't have a lot of prolific talent at wide receiver. So even if there is a passing type situation going on, I still feel like they have the backs to kind of just be the bruisers that they are and kind of get it done. So with the track record like B.J. Smith and, of course, D.K. Billsley, who is the senior, but he fell off after 10 games. He got replaced, uh, I believe it was an injury, injury, and then, of course, the sophomore – Kamani Vidal, uh, he came in, he started 13 games. He did uh, end up at 135.5 fantasy points. That's on fan tracks. Of course, that's PPR. He averaged 12.32 fantasy points per game, so that's not lights out, but that is a decent flex spot. He's 67% roster, so a lot of people know about uh, Vidal and is taking him first. He's 27% started, so people are throwing him in the uh, lineup. And then, of course, the sophomore who came up from freshman, DeMonte Woods, got some looks. He only started one game because of uh, Vidal sitting out for one game. Did 90.4 fantasy points, so he did decent in the time that he did get. 8.2 fantasy points per game. Only He's only 44% rostered. Of course, D.K. Billingsley started 10 games in 2020. Um, he did start some this past year. Only 5.6 and 0.6 by his point. Excuse me, 0.6 fantasy points per game. 0% rostered, 0% started. Everyone has kind of realized that Vidal is the guy to own. And here's where I'm bringing up Tate Meadows is that he fits the same standard as the Vidal was, like Billingsley, like B.J. Smith. He has the same look, feel, and just the same, I would say, almost like mentality as far as don't go down on the first hit like the Troy running backs are known for. So this is where systems, um, I would say, matter because I still feel until Troy can get a really higher three-star or four-star in there as like a wide receiver to kind of really bring up the elevation of their passing game. But right now, they have enough to probably get some screen passes, get some, you know, short yardage and stuff like that. But they do rely heavily on the running back systems there at Troy. So I think that still carries in this year for the adjustments. And then next year kind of starts that one. What we're getting at, and I agree with Luke, is that Tate Meadows is a guy that we're not going to take later in drafts. We're not even going to take him in Dynasty, CFF, stuff like that. We're really just going to mark him as a wait and see uh, approach and just look for him as far as pick us because if Vidal goes down with injury, um, something happens where him and Woods can't do it. I don't think Billingsley is going to be an issue anymore, and he's graduating after this year, so maybe he's uh, just going to use the red shirt and you know kind of carry off into the sunset. But I do think that Tame Otis gets his time in the, uh, in the light probably next year. 
Um, I'm sure depending on Detroit running backs, not a lot of them get a lot of NFL hype. And so that's where Luke's right when it comes to C2C or Devi, they get looked past a lot because it's a very low end G5 school. But as far as production in CFF and getting your college uh, points to win your C2C leagues or your CFF leagues, uh, the tight end or excuse me, the running back position at Troy is a good one to have and to hold. Um, so let's look at what we got. Of course, this is Troy returning production, of course, in 2022. And this is per CFP winning at the Patreon there. So overall, they have 78.66% of their players coming back. That is 13th in the FBS. So that also leads me to believe that Tay Meadows probably is not going to get starting anywhere. Like I said, it's going to take injury, and we don't wish that on anybody, but that's probably what it's going to take. They are third in their conference as well. So Tay Meadows is probably going to be a wait and see or almost a 0% production in year one or red shirt, if you want to call it. So the offensive return is 71.22. That's also really high. That's ranked 43rd in the entire FBS. So they're getting a lot of their offensive back as far as their O-line, their running backs, stuff like that as well. Like I said, new coach in town, new OC in town. So we might see some change up a little bit, but I think it still takes them a year because they're probably going to go to the bread and butter. So the running game's there. We can just only hope by when Tay Meadows comes back around, he's had time to develop. Uh, as far as passing game is concerned, since the ball eats them up a little bit, and then uh, go into a more proficient uh, negative yards, screen pass type thing, so he gets more touches. And in a PPR format, that's all you can hope for, man. And uh, Luke, what any last thoughts on Mr. Tay Meadows, sir? Um, the only other thing I, I want to kind of touch on is, again, going back to some of my research for the 2020. Um, three running backs, since I didn't get into the 2022, is is looking at the strength of schedule. So the average, I did, I've so far I'm I think like 44 guys into 2023, and the average uh, strength of schedule for those are 18.3. Mm-hmm. And his his strength of schedule is 4.7, so well below the average. So at that point, I want to see like gaudy numbers. If, yeah. if you have a low and and in his junior year having 264 yards and four touchdowns that does it for me like hey you're not playing great competition maybe and you're putting up great numbers so hey it that gives me something as opposed to hey you're not playing great competition and you're not putting up numbers and hey I'm gonna fade you but this at least you know keeps me interested. For sure. And I love that um, he did get a couple of the P5 offers. So there's the interest. I mean, he could have been just as much being in competition with Justin Williams there at Tennessee or had a shot at Memphis to kind of climb the, the ranks there. But he did cl- chose to stay in Troy, which I believe is closer to home. So I think that was a deciding factor here for Tay, um, which I think is a great landing spot. Like I said, the prestige of the Troy running back is good. If they can get a full workload. So if Fidel got all of it versus Woods kind of eating into that because of a week off because of injury or whatever, which are by now had a chance to probably get over 16 fantasy points per game. Uh, BJ Smith before him was ranked a lot, way higher. I believe he was closer to more like 20 fantasy points per game. So if Tim Meadows can get the lion's share, uh, this is a good running back to look into for your arsenal, especially in CFF. Uh, C2C would be a long shot, but he'd be a great spot starter. Just not, you know, not we're not looking at anything as far as like NFL right now. It's way too early to even remotely see that, but he could extremely blow up and transfer in the next couple of years as well. So you just really never know in this type of uh, this type of uh, age that we're in in the NCAA, but uh, definitely a guide to watch and to make sure and just check on that roster from one, every once in a while, man. I'll say uh, also like to kind of paint, uh, use Felix Sharp's words and to paint a picture mm-hmm. uh, if, if you're just listening to the, uh, the podcast, but they wear this red jersey, red helmet. It's very, very... Re- it reminds me a lot of Alabama's colors. Their of the and, yeah. and he he was from Alabama, and they played a couple games on their field. And I just remember that watching his highlights. And like I mentioned, how big he was. I was like, mm-hmm. I honestly thought I was watching an Alabama running back, and I had to like go back and like, hey, am I got the right person? Because he was just so big. They were in those yeah. you know high crimson high jerseys. High like with the numbers, just like Alabama, I was like, am I watching it? I'm like, oh, wait, no, this is actually high school. So <laughs> you can tell by yeah. other than that, I was like, wow, they have very similar colors. So definitely a lot of uh, rolling tide uh, influence there for sure. 
Yeah, but uh, that's the vibe. I got like a Derek Henry vibe because he was just so much bigger than everybody. It was like it was back to that national championship game where Derek Henry's standing next to Mark Ingram. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh man, that's oh, huge. Yeah. And then they got that picture, and then Mark Ingram's like, "What do you got to do me dirty like that, man?" <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Mark Ingram. He's been, he was been a he was a great fantasy football back for a while there too. And he's not bad if you uh you know worried about Alvin Kamara, so he's still there. So check that out. Um, all right. Uh, well, I want to thank. You, Mr. Luke Probosco, for coming on to the Future Freshman Podcast. Where can people find you uh, on social media? And what's anything cool that you got going on that you want the listeners to to know? And, of course, the viewers here on YouTube. Uh, uh, you can find me at Probasco Luke, P as in Paul, R-O, B as in boy, A-S-C as in cat, O-L-U-K-E. Um, I don't really do a lot of content. Like, I'm trying to get into it with doing uh, 2023 wide receivers and, and running backs. Um, so hopefully I can get into that here this this next year. But just working on getting some interviews for, for the crew. Um, it's going to be kind of slowing down here because we got summer ball starting, summer workouts is just going to be – then it's going to be the season. So um, kind of wind it down that and, and going to pick that back up here in the, in the winter um, mm-hmm. or spring next year and then – uh, if anybody wants to, I, d- I do a home C two C league. I've I found up, yeah. I found nine other uh, degenerates just like all of us, and we've had a blast. It's, it's again, it's unique because as I know all these guys, they're from around my home, and a lot of the other C two C leagues, it's like you're you know you're over here, this part of the country, this part of the country. Some are you know in England, some are in Canada. So I think that's what makes it unique. And I started making a podcast for that because I was doing um, weekly recaps and and talking smacks. And I would just do a a podcast for the group. So if you ever just want to want something else to listen to, feel free. We do college news, NFL news, any breakdown, any trades that went down and and uh, have guests on our, our show that are from from the leagues just so we can keep the smack talk going. Absolutely. I was actually, uh, I guess that's called Luke's home C2C league. Very original. Oh man. We got to come up with i uh, I'll help you offline. We'll come up with a decent like podcast name. That's actually how I got started in writing and stuff like that. I would do like the recaps for the home league for my redraft uh, NFL, just, you know, where it all starts, where you're just like, what there's fantasy football and we do write ups, you know, talking the smack, stuff like that. Got into writing. And then I was like, I probably should try podcasting. I don't want to write all this stuff. <laughs> But uh, Luke, I want to thank you for coming on the show, man. Uh, and for those that are listening and stuff like that as well, uh, thank you for doing that. Uh, once again, shout out to Joe. Thank you so much, Mr. Hyman, for joining us. Uh, and we hope to see you guys next time. Peace.